My name is Bull from BMF. I was born and raised in Compton, California. Uh, BMF member. BMF is definitely a national phenomenon. It was the most prolific movement on the streets of America. It's like that again without it actually being on the streets of America. Crazy, ain't it? Yeah. How, how, would, how would you account for that, bro? I, would, I wouldn't really account for it on something, say, purposely. I say it's just something that happened, unplanned. Like, we used to laugh about it. You know how you go to a, you go to a swap meet and you see a rap a lot change, a, all, you know, different rap groups change. We used to go in there and see them in there and be like, one day they're going to have BMF chains in here. It was just a joke, funny. And over time, you began to see it like, look, nigga, it's a, they got fake BMF chains. And you just saw it slowly affect the world. That, that's, that's an interesting thing. Fake BMF chains, like comparing it to rap labels. Everybody in one way or another was affected by BMF, whether it was directly or indirectly, whether it be coming through a party, meeting somebody at a restaurant, being in a store at a certain time, and just just reaping the benefits of being around somebody who was actually from BMF, because it, it was a, a more of a, a sharing thing. Like, you would look at us like, oh, they sold drugs, they were, they were drug dealers, and the first thing that comes to mind is the bad things that, that are depicted of a, a drug dealer. And I think a lot of people met the other side of us before they met what people would say is the drug dealer. Once you met the drug dealer, it was nothing but negativity from there. But before you met the drug dealer, it was just a group of good men. And it can get discombobulated or mixed up with one thing going wrong. And I think that's what happened. So in contrast to Jeezy's genuine apparent passion to become a rapper, Blue seemed a lot more lax about it. He seemed a lot less, he seemed more callous about it. It's like. I think because he made so much money so early before his rap career took off. And I think that had a lot to do with the decisions that he made, good and bad. You know, having that much money turns a a million dollar deal to a five dollar deal. Because nigga, I just counted a million dollars three, four times this week. You gonna tell me you gonna give me a million dollar deal when in the aspect, nigga, that's a great deal for what you was doing at the time. There was a lot of deals that came across the table for him and I think his cockiness because he had so much going on and you had so much at the time that <coughs> it didn't even sound good to you. Yeah. I was afraid that that's what was happening. I mean, because you, you, you... I understand, you know, from the situation that was going on because at the time, it was... They was into the music, but we was getting so much money at that at that point in time that... He wanted to go as a crew to his shows and all of that, and I'd rather work. So now to ride with my homeboy, I don't want to ride with you. I'm gonna go catch this bag, and that's what it—that's where the separation started to become with us. Where it's like, man, come on, let's go do this, and I'm like, man, I'm working now. It's, I gotta do this, and he want to do that. And I think that's what changes some of the decisions that he made with his music. And Jeezy. There wasn't no separation move with Jeezy because he was always doing his CTE thing. See, I, see, I didn't. I didn't. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was never like that. He was, he was always, see, that's what, that's what people, I think a lot of people get mixed up. Everybody always had their own crews where they came from. Nobody had to, you never had to stop being from where you from or stop claiming what you claim because you would BMF now. And that, I think a lot of people get that misinterpreted with 
everybody who comes around like, oh, he was from there. He's still from there. He's still from wherever, wherever he was claiming before he met us. It, it, it does not mean we are a gang and you are affiliated with us and stop claiming we are not a gang. That's the whole thing. We are a family. First and foremost, we are a family. He was accepted in as a family member. And that's how we accepted him as family. It, all your homeboys, they become family too. CTE, whoever they are, everybody becomes a family. And that's what people don't realize. They're like, oh, he switched up or he did this wrong or he did that. It wasn't never nothing about nobody switching up or nothing. It was him, us embracing him and his crew now. And that's where you started seeing CTE and BMF together like that. That was just us embracing what they had going on. I think the idea that it was a family or being promoted as a family, I think people didn't really, didn't really get that. They didn't really get that. That's because you saw negativity before you really got to embrace us. So now... You're looking at us in two different, out of two different eyes. One eye, you're saying, oh, that's the guys who was helping out all of them people over there. And then the second eye, you're saying, well, that's the same guys that was on the news that they was talking about the other day, so I don't know. Right. So it's really a thing about you have to take that time out and get to know somebody, talk to somebody. It's a lot of people who never just took that time and just sat down and talked to somebody, and it's a lot of people who did. And until you do it for yourself, you'll never know. That's right. It was glamorous, but I mean, when you think of the glamour, you, you should also think of the repercussions. I mean, if, you, if you're comfortable with the glamour and you're comfortable with the repercussions, it's a comfortable job for you. If, you're not, if, you, don't, if you don't weigh the good with the bad of what could happen, then you're not thinking of what you're doing. I weighed the good and the bad. I was comfortable with what I was doing. I knew what the outcome could be. I was comfortable. I lived it. I embraced it. The um, what was the first thing you did when you came home? Did you go? You come here? You go that way? No, I came here. I wanted to see my kids. That's all I wanted to see. I just wanted to see my kids. That's the only thing I missed while I was locked up: my kids and my family. No cars, no money, no chicks. It's kids and family. That's all that mattered. We were running around a lot back then, man. Did you get to see your kids and stuff like that as much? Did you take the opportunity to see them as much? What, when back then? I was really just starting when I got locked up. So I got yanked from mine at the beginning. Right. So, you know, a lot of my getting to know my kids was through, through glass. Right. So I really got to know my kids once I came home. That's where I built that relationship at. Um... What do you do now? Uh, real estate. Real estate. That's ironic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, everybody need a place to live. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly everybody right. need a place to live. That's exactly right. Real estate and food, man. Place to live and a place to eat. That's right. That's right. Two things you can't live without. That's right. Yeah, you had the, uh, you had the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Right? Wing spot. Right, the wing yeah. spot. I, I couldn't eat in. Yeah, see, <laughs> I'm gonna get you some vegan wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that, um, man, I'm really glad that you're here. You know, that we're face to face. Yeah, man, I'm blessed. I, I miss him, man. I, I miss it, but, bro. Oh, man, he'll be here sooner than you think. I mean, indeed, bro. It, it truly was the greatest show on earth. It really was. Mm hmm. So, what is the future of BMF? Man, we're about to tell y'all our story. That's the future. There's a lot of people trying to do that. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to tell it if you ain't from it. Well, On one night, you could write a, a full a full 24 hours, you could write a book on it. That's right. From, that's from waking up to the next morning going back to sleep. Cause you ain't going to sleep till the next morning. You feel the night about that? So sun up to sun up to sun up. Well no. Mm -hmm. Well no, boy, boy, I do. Um Well, we're gonna stay tuned, man. You know, if there's if there was one thing that you could have done differently or changed, if what would it be? 
I would have never talked to the nigga who snitched on me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, man. Um, you just checked out a monstrous exclusive bull BMF. Um, this is American dope, man. It don't get no better than this. Stay tuned.